Um, I know the quality on my camera is is not usually that good, but this seems particularly bad. So, uh, hang on, sorry, it's a little bit in the way of my uh, lovely face. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I, I I might switch to recording on my mobile because this camera is terrible. But anyway. Um, I wanted to talk today about neighbours, dealing with neighbours if you make music at home. Um, it's something I've had to contend with a lot because I do very loud and often kind of like obnoxious or vulgar raps. So it's it's been a problem over the years. Um, at times I really took liberties and went way too far. But now I try really hard to be respectful of the people around me. And it's it's quite difficult, but I've learned a lot. I really have, like, because I've I've been kind of obsessive about this. I, I hated going to the studio. I always wanted to record at home. And people would always say, there's no point, like, just go to a studio. You're never going to be able to find a place where you can record. But I've always managed. I've always managed to find places. Uh, it helps that until recently I lived with my girlfriend so we could get, like, two-bed apartments together which made things a lot easier. So so that I mean that's my first uh suggestion if if it's possible is find a place with multiple rooms where one room is kind of held in between the other rooms. You you can look at the floor plans most of the time when you're renting. Uh I'm just checking this audio's on. Yeah, yeah. You can look at the floor plans most of the time when you're renting. And um you'll see where all the rooms are, where they're, where they're all positioned and stuff. And, yeah, ideally you'll have, you know, like the the apartment stairwell on this side of the room and then a bathroom on that side and then your living room there or something so you have a room that's kind of surrounded by other rooms because, I mean, the, the default principle when it comes to making soundproof spaces is a room within a room. That's, like, the best way to uh, get a soundproofed space or a soundproof space. Um... I'm not sure exactly on the signs of that. I think it's to do with the the sound kind of like bounces around in between uh, the the walls. But if anyone watching this is like you know into science, they're probably cringing at that explanation. But um, science, uh, I don't even fucking know if that counts as science. I don't know anything. Um, yeah, so. That is, I would say, I mean, the, the main thing is to make sure you don't have, like, an immediate neighbouring wall, obviously, goes without saying. Um, the next thing would be to look for older buildings, especially in the UK, I know this to be the case, like, the older Victorian buildings and stuff are much more solid. The ones that were built after the war, the, the walls are basically made of cardboard. Like, they're just, I mean, I've had some where it is literally been like the person is in the room like you can hear them not even just coughing you can hear them like sniffing you know you can hear someone being like like in the next room and that shit is uh obviously you can't make music like that you know um i mean some people do some people just say fuck it but i think if you make kind of inoffensive music that can be okay you know for a few hours in the daytime you're really loudly playing a guitar and singing like an acoustic guitar or something and it's kind of like conventional music that people are used to hearing i think it's okay but if you're doing like fucking screamo or you're doing like weird rap like I do or you're doing stuff that's like emotionally intense, I think it's a bit inappropriate to subject other people to that, to be honest, like too much. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's that. I mean, avoiding avoiding like modern places. The other thing is you can go kind of the opposite way and just try and find a place with a bunch of other people who don't give a shit, and, but then you might not really be in like a creative space of your own. But I mean, a lot of people, obviously, they just live in house shares of like other musicians and rappers or whatever, and, and there's no bother because there's no one to bother. Um, I know that when I lived in normal house shares, like sometimes there'd be nine people in one house and I couldn't. I, I That was the time when, for years when I first started writing, I just whispered all my songs to myself in my room. Like I didn't even fucking practice them. I would just put the beat on and like, just like, be like, and just like imagine what it would sound like in my head. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I haven't really contemplated what the, 
sort of pros and cons of that were but obviously it's good to be able to practice out loud and when I was first able to it was like the most amazing feeling ever um it was about four years into making music when I was like able to regularly practice out loud um or at least in my opinion I wasn't able to before and I also I mean with me it was I was so paranoid about people like stealing my lyrics and stuff which was pretty funny in hindsight to think of like the people I lived with you know like people who are coming over from Spain for a couple of years to like work as a kitchen porter and they were going to steal my lyrics. <laughs> it's uh, really fucking stupid in hindsight, but still, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's good to be protective over your shit, I guess. But back then I thought everything I was writing was like, just, I just thought it was like, I thought it was like biblical. I was just like, there's no, this is just so good. Like if anyone hears this, they're going to be tempted to steal it. And, uh, Really, what's more likely is if people hear it, they're not even going to fucking pay for it on Bandcamp or iTunes. They'll just listen to it and maybe enjoy it, but probably not. Um, nah, I'm, I'm uh, self-deprecating. Um, which is a very annoying thing to do. Uh, yeah, the um, so the other thing is... Uh, well, it, in... The UK, for example, uh, the thing that I had the most luck with in the end, aside from trying to find, looking at the floor plans and trying to find room. For example, if you if you get like a place where it's at the end of a terrace or something and you have one room that's on the end and there's another room in between, then you might have nothing underneath you, you know, your mate's room or your partner's room or whatever on the other side and then another property there. And there'll still be some noise going through if you're, you know, like fucking playing drums and shit, but um, not much. So, uh, although actually I did once, I mean, I, uh, there was a place we lived in, it was again, it was one of these like modern builds where the walls were just paper basically. And I was in a room that was here and then there was a, a, our living room there and then the next place. And I was doing these crazy songs at like 11 at night and stuff thinking like no one can hear because there was no other neighbors. And, uh, and then, uh, yeah, then, then like, uh, we got a noise complaint saying it was, like, really... Cr- I mean, I was, like, screaming, like, cunt and stuff and just, like, hot... Just, like, really weird, drunk, like, nonsense, basically. Um, and, uh, yeah, we got a really bad complaint. And then a few days later, they had, the like, a radio on. It was just one of those normal tinny radios. And I could hear it from the far away room. So at this place, the walls were so thin, it made almost no difference. Um, And the doors were not very, you know. But yeah, normally, if they're even reasonably decent walls and doors, uh, then two layers, two barriers will will do a a huge amount, a huge, huge amount. So the next thing, uh, and I think this is probably the most useful tip in the video if you're living in apartments or flats or or whatever um try to find one that's above a shop it depends what type of shop it is obviously but uh that can be a really really um good way of doing things a because i've noticed they often seem to have a sort of weird like double ceiling when it's like a commercial building i mean not always i guess that's kind of baseless but they do often have you know those tiles that you can like push up and then there's another ceiling above it um they also i mean if it's for example well like a bar i mean you might not it depends on you know how you feel about that but there's some places they're only open at night and they're closed all day so all day you'll have no one below you so as long as if you get a place that's above a shop and you know that you've got like no one on that side then the shop for a certain period of every day won't be a problem or alternatively they close at five and they'll be gone for the rest of the day which i mean it depends on what how the rest of the situation is you know if you have other neighbors because obviously after five you can't really be that loud um if there are other people around you know it's more it's more acceptable to make a lot of noise in the daytime is what i'm saying but uh, if they're your only neighbours, if the people who work in the shop are your only neighbours, then basically as soon as they're gone, you can do whatever you want. So that was that was pretty useful for us, um, for me, but we were moving together. Um, and 
Yeah, I mean, also they often they'll have like music on in the shop. That could be a problem. Obviously, you might get some bleed coming up from there, but more likely they'll have some crappy radio on that's not going to be anywhere near as loud as you like recording music, and that will drown out a bit of the sound for them and give you a bit of anonymity and kind of privacy. And there'll be you know like hustle and bustle and crap going on in the shop, um, especially if people are like making things and moving lots of things around. You know, they can't really hear other shit that's going on, uh, even if you you know even maybe they could if they were like you know sitting silently but it's rarely sort of silent in a shop um and uh yeah so that's a good one the other thing um and here in spain is amazing for this because they don't really have carpets here because it's so hot all the floors are stone pretty much there's some places with wood floors pretty much every apartment here even cheap crappy apartments it's uh stone floors all the way up so You sometimes hear a tiny bit from above you. I mean, I don't hear anything here, literally nothing. But you sometimes hear a tiny bit from above you because it's on the floor, you know, so it it sort of reverberates right down. But you don't hear anything from below. Um, So, uh, yeah, in the last place, uh, we were, like, ground floor. And, you know, the next thing above is a stone floor. And then there's only one side. There was only one side where there was neighbours. So it was really good in that respect. And and, uh, it's been pretty easy for me to find another place here where I can, you know, more or less do my thing. Because, again, uh, stone floors, it's really, really fucking good. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else apart from, you know, the obvious things of just like trying not to be a dick and like asking people obviously I mean I've heard some people do that there was a guy who I used to record with and he said that he just went and knocked on all the doors because he, he was like an engineer and he just knocked on all the doors and said you know between nine to five I have people recording in here if it's ever a problem let me know and I think when you've done that sometimes especially if you're confident people are reluctant to then complain because you've kind of built a bit of a rapport and you've established it as like a professional thing and you know it um, ultimately, I mean, you are allowed to do it in the daytime, you know, really, like unless you're being insanely loud. I don't know if there's some kind of exceptions to that, but you, you can kind of make as much noise as you want in the daytime. I just don't think it's very good, and I don't think it's, like, fair. But um, especially, I mean, during COVID, that was when I felt worst about it because imagine you're at home trying to work all day and you're like listening to me rap in the next room you know like that sounds fucking horrible it's bad enough when there's construction on and stuff um i had it for a while we lived above a shop in brighton it was like an indian corner shop and the guy used to have his family downstairs and uh like little kids and some of the sometimes i'd finish like a horrible song like really like just like vulgar shit and then I would just hear like three year olds downstairs and I'd think like, man, what like what would what how can they even process that experience? You know? It's like they probably just didn't didn't even register it, but um Yeah, what was I saying? Um oh yeah and I did I remember when I did a song Blazed It Yesterday good good song uh, check out the video if you haven't seen it Blazed It Yesterday Olof O-L-O-F-F. Um yeah I think I did like a hundred takes for that song and they were so loud some songs you don't realise when you hear them how loud they are like how loud the take was because I hear some of them back and I think oh it just sounds like normal rapping and at the time like if I would take my headphones off, or you notice when you finish a take sometimes like when the music stops and you're like oh my god god i was just like screaming everyone must have heard that and what would they think i had a couple oh in the last place we were in as well i had some really bad ones um i uh well there was one time i i started recording with um what do you call it fucking feedback monitoring a live monitor i don't know yeah i'm sure i'm just pretty stoned um i know the word normally the fuck do you call it when you can hear yourself when you're recording monitoring maybe yeah um don't smoke weed uh yeah whatever that is anyway i was i was doing that and i I never normally do that 
but a studio engineer sort of passive aggressively suggested it to me once which I took as an insult because I take everything as an insult and I thought he was trying to say that like I was not good um, so I started trying it but normally what I would do is I'd have my headphones a little bit off so I could hear myself but now because I was you know because I could hear myself uh, I I just put them all the way on and I had the music real loud because I couldn't normally have it real loud so I had it real loud and I and I could hear my own voice but what I couldn't hear was like apparently I was I, I was like fully screaming like like my girlfriend said it was so loud that it, even in the room she like she was really far away and she said it was it was like deafening and I don't know why she didn't stop me I was kind of annoyed um, so we had that and then a couple of days later I waited a few days to do anything loud I was so embarrassed because there's like kids upstairs and families and old ladies and shit and like we're foreign here as well. It just feels like, oh, some fucking nasty British rapper coming over and like screaming about pussy and stuff. Um, so uh, then a couple of days later, I was like, fine, I'll record again, you know. And, I, and I had, the songs were quite loud, but I was like, I have to keep it, you know, reasonable. And I did it and I was like, okay, cool. Like, I think that was good. That, that was definitely quieter, you know, it was still a bit loud, but I think I raised the bar with the first one so much that this would be okay. And I finished and I was like, all right, good. And then I looked and the fucking front door was like wide open, um, which was, uh, so it must have, the sound must have just been pouring out of that place. And uh, it's pretty embarrassing when that happens. It's weird, it's just, you see it and you're like, I can't, I can't, un you know, well, I can close the door, obviously. I'm not like, you know, but I can't go back in time and close it. Um, it was the worst. I mean, this is not music related, um, but <laughs> um, me and my girlfriend were like uh, having quite like. If you know, if you don't want to hear about like sex stuff, and just turn it off now because I finished all the neighbors' advice. But um, but we were we were having like quite like we were on drugs. And we were having quite intense like kind of like pornographic sex, like and uh, like. A, it was a bit excessive, you know, and like loud. And uh, we'd been taking a lot of sort of dopaminogenic kind of degenerate drugs at the time and, and like watching a lot of porn and just, yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, we, <laughs> we were having sex for like a really long time. It was like really fucking loud and shit. And, and then we finished. And... I just like looked over and the one of the there's like four French doors not even French doors like but big big doors out into the garden and one of them was just fully open like completely open and when other people would be like you know in their apartment with the window open and ours was open you could hear them talking you could hear what they were saying and the guy who lived upstairs his daughter had been staying and she was like 11 and it was peak of the summer in Spain so people had had their windows open obviously people must have closed them when they heard that but it was the weirdest feeling because like I don't know I, re I really don't like stuff like that like and I uh, I just look I remember looking and seeing the door was open and everything just, it was a fully like like every it was just like I just kind of zoomed in on it and everything froze and I was like oh my god oh my god like there's just nothing I could do to go back and to, to close it and like yeah oh, it, was, it was chilling it was absolutely chilling I remember I was just like to my girlfriend I was just like Tara 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 was just like what and I was just like and pointed to the door and she was just sort of like oh. <laughs> we both, both just froze like we didn't know how to react at all it was fucking horrible it was so embarrassing Oh man, I felt terrible about that. Because I fucking hate, like, sort of people imposing that stuff on other people. I don't know, it, like, really bothers me. Like, like shit like, uh, like, doggers and stuff, when they go to, like, nice places and they, like, fuck each other in the arse and stuff, like, in their car. And it's like, hey, people come here to go for a walk, you fucking weirdos, you know? Or when you go out somewhere and, like, you be on, like, Dartmoor or something, you find, like, a used condom full of jizz and it's just, like... Oh, yeah. like people it's like young people imposing their like fucking dirty sexuality on everyone else 
and uh, it's horrible. I I I I hate I, you know. I never want to like be like that. So it was uh, truly chilling, but completely besides the point. Apart from you know, make sure your doors are closed. That's the uh, that's the big tip for today. Whatever you're doing, unless you're you know going to get a post or like you're about to leave, make sure your doors are closed. 